Hey guys, welcome to the Fitness Entrepreneur Show. Today I want to talk about a very special character, Elon Musk. You've probably heard of him. He's famous for PayPal, SpaceX, Solar City, as well as Tesla. So to say this man is the real life Tony Stark. He's an inspired individual with tons of huge inspiration, vision, and ultimately business and entrepreneurial success. And it's definitely somebody that we should study. So what I want to do today is I want to dissect his thinking, look at some core elements, and give my thoughts as to how it can relate to us in the fitness industry, or any industry for that matter, so that you can also get super inspired and study the greats and learn from them and plug and play those concepts and beliefs into your business so you can make more money, more impact, and more freedom. Let's go. Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. So it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of fear. People should think, well, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to, be, to feel fear. Like you'd have to, there'd be something mentally wrong if you didn't feel fear. So let's talk about fear as an entrepreneur. Fear is definitely going to exist. When you step into new levels of your business or you do things that you haven't done before, it's going to feel uncertain. And there are elements of yourself that are going to potentially doubt yourself. But there's a couple of things that you need to realize that every element of fear is also making you aware of the areas that you want to grow into, the areas that you need to strengthen yourself in. So all fear bears a gift. You've also got to bear in mind that with anything that you're scared of that is uncertain is going to yield massive personal growth that ultimately is going to serve you when growing your business for many years to come. How do you guard yourself against fear? Well, number one, get educated. Look at the areas that you're scared about, get educated on them by listening to great people or people that have been there and done it before you to fast track your knowledge and take intellectual shortcuts. Secondly, surround yourself with inspiring people. Surround yourself with people that often push themselves, people that take risks, calculated risks, and that ultimately are gonna support you. You want people that are objective, people that are also that are free, aren't afraid to say, hey, reconsider this. They're not yes men, they're not yes women. They're afraid to challenge you on your beliefs in order to protect you. You also don't want to be around people that are constantly saying, hey, you're mad, you're crazy, you're not going to believe in that. You've got to surround yourself with the right people and in turn harness your focus. On top of that as well, realizing that you're not going to be motivated, you're not going to be excited every day. And realizing that discipline will override motivation every single time. So look at all the stuff in your life, in your business that you need to do that is non-negotiable, both as a personal activity and as a business activity. Personal wise, it might be doing your journaling, your meditation, your reading, your mindset stuff. Inside the business, it might be making a sale every day, putting out a call to action. It might be rebuilding your infrastructure or your systems. It might be investing into new knowledge to basically grow yourself. What are the non-negotiables that you need to do every day and also every week, every month, every quarter and tick those things off? Don't overwhelm yourself. Give yourself a list of five or three things to do that are non-negotiables that when done over time will combine into new identity, new success and business growth. So fear is normal. When you grow different levels, different devils. You gotta become a different person and that requires education, sticking around the right people, venturing into the unknown and sitting in the fear of expansion. Let's see what else he has to say. So many people try to talk me out of starting a ride company. It was, it was crazy. One good friend of mine collected a whole series of videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed and we've been fortunate and at least thus far, they have succeeded. Second, don't listen to naysayers. I couldn't agree more with this, and it reinforces the first point that I said in the original point. You know, when I first started my fitness business, my mom said to me, what are you gonna do when you're 50 years old? What are you gonna do when you're 60? You're never gonna be able to coach people. And look at me now. You've gotta realize that there are gonna be a lot of people that don't believe in your dreams because they give up on their own. And the reality is you are responsible for your success, no one else. And if you find that the people around you don't support you, you've got to find the people that do. And trust me, there always are those people. If you're living in a household 
or you're with a partner or you're with friends and they all are talking about other people, gossiping and not interested in growing themselves, there's a very high chance that you are going to get pulled into that as well. So make sure that you believe in yourself over anyone else in order to succeed in business. And that requires surrounding yourself with smart, strong people that will drive you and stretch you every single time you connect with them. Well, I hate to say it, but the naysayers did get me down. <laughs> um, but but, but uh, yeah, I, I think absolutely um, persistence is extremely important. Um, you, you should not give up if there is, if there's, unless you're forced to give up. You know, unless there's no, no other choice. Um, uh, now, now that, 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 that principle can be misapplied um, if you happen to be trying to um, penetrate a brick wall with your head. Uh, you know, so, so you have to be cautious in, in, in always saying one should always persist and never give up because there actually are times when you should give up um, be, because you're, you're doing something in error. But if you're convinced that what you're doing is correct, then you should never give up. That third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. I totally agree with this. Just like I said earlier on, you're not always gonna be motivated all the time. And being disciplined and persistent is ultimately what is going to allow you to be successful. Small daily habits over time, just like stocks and shares invested over time, are gonna compound and ultimately yield success. So making sure that you're super clear on your non-negotiables for your personal life because you are the vehicle that ultimately makes your business successful. And I have non-negotiables for myself and my clients around mindset, around spirituality, around health and fitness, around rest, all of these things, making sure that they're dialed in. What are the things that are allowing you to perform well mentally, spiritually, and also physically? On top of that, business-wise, what are the non-negotiables that are going to allow you to perform when it comes to marketing and attracting clients, closing sales, and delivering a great service to your clients? What are the three things that you could do for each area that are ultimately going to allow you to grow? That is super important. Dialing those things in, while they may seem small, when done day in, day out, and you can tick these things off, 100% are going to yield growth. Elon also talked about knowing when to give up. And some people don't give up because they've invested a lot of time into something and they ultimately are too far invested. Sometimes you've got to literally cut the cord or burn the boats as they say, and move on to the next project, move on to the next client. And that is super important, especially when you're growing a online fitness business and you're doing sales calls. We all know what it's like to get on a call with someone who we just can't get over the line. Sometimes it's just better to just cut your losses and go, they don't see the value in me. They're gonna be a nightmare client. Let's move on and help somebody else. You gotta make sure that that you that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier, where if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. And they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always gonna buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. Create an amazing product or service. I couldn't agree any more with this. Let's get clear on a couple of things. As a fitness professional, you've gotta get clear on the fact that there's a lot of people out there selling the same thing. Body transformations, fat loss, you name it. What is your point of difference? Why do people come to you over anyone else? Sometimes it can be qualifications, but quite often it's gonna be results. If you're known to get incredible results, then 100% you are going to outmarket and outsell and outgrow your competition. So staying completely obsessed on delivering an amazing service is quite possibly one of the biggest, highest ROI activities that you can do in your business. Remember, when it comes to growing a business, sales makes money, coaching keeps money. And when we talk about clients that come into your program, we keep them with our service. We keep them by getting their results. We keep them by stretching their future and giving them more goals. And what you need to realize with that is that uh, your clients are ultimately referral machines. They're walking, talking business cards. So giving them a great result, keeping them accountable, uh, staying on top of them, is one, gonna help them transform their bodies. Their friends are gonna see that. If their friends see that, their friends are gonna inquire. 
And referrals are quite simply the best form of business because your referral ultimately just deals with price objections and what's it gonna be like and sells them in. And you've also gotta realize that that referral could lead to multiple referrals. So never just look on you know, just the one sale at a time. Look at the return on the relationship over time. And creating an amazing product that gets results is absolutely paramount. Your program, your offer is only a rip off when you do not deliver on the results that you promised. So bearing in mind, you've got to do that from a systems perspective, making sure that your systems are dialed in, that you can actually handle and fulfill the clients that you take on, but also as well from an education perspective and you understand the technicalities of mindset, nutrition, exercise, and everything else that comes along with your unique fitness service. If, if you get it such that your customers want you to mm. succeed, mm. Then, then you probably will. All right, you have to focus on the customer and delivering for them. Yeah, make yeah. sure if your customers love you, you, will, you your odds of success are dramatically higher. Because I think that the, really the way to um, sell any product is through word of mouth. So if, if one, somebody gets the car, they really like it, they, and, and oh, actually the key is like to have a product that people will love. You know, if they're at a party or touring friends or whatever, um, you'll talk about the things that you love. And that's basically how, how our sales have, have grown. Like we don't, we don't spend any money on advertising or endorsements or, uh, and um, so anyone like buys our car, they just bought it because they, they like the car. Focusing on your customer, again, reinforcing the previous point, understanding that your customers and serving them is one of the highest ROI activities that you can do. Face it, they're gonna get a result, they're gonna refer, their referrals are gonna refer if you do a great job. And you know what? Most people are gonna stick around with you, not just because they continually wanna transform themselves, but because they like you, because they like your systems, they like your accountability, and in turn, you excite them. You should look forward to see your clients, and your clients should look forward to seeing you. And you've gotta get very clear on the niche, the type of people you take from worst to first, your audience, the demographic, where they live, the age group, the cultural backgrounds, the interests, and ultimately the avatar, the prime examples of individuals that you love working with. Get clear on all of that in order to get super clear on the language, the belief systems of your customers and know how to relate to them, know how to jump in when you sense that they're feeling stuck and understand their problems with deep empathy so that you can create a service that solves that. That's ultimately what you're getting paid for. They focus on, on signal over noise. Um, a lot of companies get, get confused. They, they spend money on things that don't actually make the product better. For example, at, at Tesla, we've, we've never spent any money on advertising. Uh, we, we put all of the money into R&D and, and manufacturing and design to try to make the car as good as possible. Um, and uh, I, I think that's, that, that's the way to go. For, for any given company, just can, can keep thinking about, are these efforts that people are, are expending, are they resulting in a better product or service? And if they're not, stop those efforts. So essentially, Elon's saying about narrowing focus and not getting caught up in a ton of different distractions. I see fitness professionals all the time get caught up in what they should be doing to generate leads, getting caught up in the latest widget or app or sales technique or whatever it is. Guys, there's very few things that you need to focus on when it comes to growing your fitness business. Four of them are your identity, your personal development, booking sales calls, doing sales calls, and delivering a great service. That's a very, very narrow focus and trying to do everything all at once, trying to be a master of all trades, uh, trying to be a jack of all trades, sorry, and literally just trying to please everyone, please everyone in the marketplace and being a generalist is one of the worst things that you can do. Focused on being a specialist, specialists get paid more, narrow your focus on the four things that matter, your mindset, your own performance, your identity, booking sales calls, doing sales calls, delivering a great service. So what is it out of all of that that you need to focus on the most over the next two weeks? Just think about that. If you were to fix that area, it's often going to fix up the other areas. And then when you finish that area, you can move on to the next. Always be evaluating in terms of weakness. Work on that weakness, bring it up. Reevaluate, where is the next weakness? Bring it up. And uh, you'll find that your focus and attention span is directed towards the areas that you need to fix. In well, I think it's important to um, apply critical, critical thinking to what, what one is doing. Um, and um, by, by that I mean just um, the fundamentals of logic, you know, of, of um, do you have the right axioms? Um, 
Are they relevant and are you making the right conclusions based on those, on those axioms? That, that's the essence of critical thinking and yet it is amazing how often people fail to do that. Um, I think wishful thinking is uh, innate uh, in the human brain. Um, you, you, you want things to be the way you, you, you wish them to be and so you tend to filter uh, information that you shouldn't filter. Um, that's the most common flaw that I see. The next thing Elon talks about is having clear thinking, critical thinking. And there are a ton of different mental models out there that you can utilize to clarify your thinking. One of the best mental models, which is super simple and easy to apply, is the inversion model. Simply asking yourself, what shouldn't I do right now in relation to your respectable goal? So if you've got a goal in business, if you want to do something that's big, or you want to grow something, build something, whatever it is, try asking yourself, what shouldn't I do? Get really clear on the stuff and then do the opposite. You can use other things uh, like stoic lines of thinking, um, you know, asking yourself, uh, why do I think this is true? What evidence, evidence do I have? Uh, what if I thought the exact opposite? Uh, what are the resources that, and, and evidence that I have to back this up? Uh, what might others think? Uh, how do I know that I'm correct? Uh, what if I'm wrong? What are the consequences? Can I live with the downside? Uh, what conclusions can I draw from all of this? So asking yourself really good quality objective questions to see both sides and weigh up the pros, weigh up the cons, is really important in terms of just making business growth happen on a consistent yearly basis. Getting clear on where you're weak, not being afraid to receive feedback from customers. This is all crucial information that you need to become better, become wiser, and ultimately more profitable and successful. If, if you're creating a company or if you're joining a company, uh, the most important thing is to uh, attra is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing that you really respect. The next thing Elon talks about is attracting great people. Couldn't agree more. Inside your program, inside your team, whatever it may be, if you've got great clients, your life's gonna be enjoyable. You're gonna love waking up and you're gonna love serving them. The problem with a lot of fitness professionals is they try to work with everyone and they're just interested in making a sale. The reality is you end up attracting people that have got really high expectations or simply don't know how to behave inside your program and don't respect you. Quite often, people that need rescued. And nine times out of 10, they're the worst people to work with. So don't be afraid to tell people, hey, you're not a right fit for my program. Hey, I don't think I can help you. Get really clear on who you want to attract into your client base because I consider clients as one of your five people to hang around with. If you've got a team, we've got many clients inside our Power Room Mastermind that run seven figure, six figure fitness businesses, and they all have team members. Making sure that people are a right fit in terms of attitude, personality, and also skill set. And quite often you want to hire with attitude first and skill set second, because skills can always be trained. You want people that are in line with your values, have the right energy, and that ultimately you can trust. And now is the time to take risk. 2008 was brutal. Phew. Um, yeah, 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon rocket for SpaceX. Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our financing round. 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, 2008. It was the last hour of the last day that it was possible. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas otherwise. Yeah, I mean, SpaceX is alive by the skin of its teeth, so is Tesla. And, I, and I, like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Um, and um, I think I had uh, like a, maybe $30 million left in, or 30 or 40 million dollars left in 2008 and I had two choices. I could put it all into one company and then the other company would definitely die um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between the two companies then both might die. Um, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat and tears into creating something or building something, it's like a child. Um, and so it's like which one Am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I, put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. Taking risks is all part of growing, not only yourself, but also your business. There are going to be many times where you step into the unknown and get completely owned. 
But you've got to realize that getting educated, surrounding with right people, setting targets, and not being afraid of adjusting those targets and goals over time is ultimately what's going to keep you on the right track. And also having realistic expectations, not taking inspiration from the wrong people, not taking inspiration from people that have got incredible gifts that you only see the highlight reel of. You've got to realize that everybody's had a journey. And some of the most successful people that you compare yourself to have often been doing this a lot longer than you. But realize that with any great growth, with any great success, all involves risk. Just look at any famous celebrity, any famous sports player, or anything like that. They have all been through adversity. So you've got to realize that when there's risk involved, there's also great growth involved. And you can make calculated decisions by taking into account all the other things that I've covered whilst dissecting Elon Musk, being a critical thinker, being around the right people, attracting the right people. These are all very essential aspects of taking risk and making it work. Risk nine times out of 10 comes from not being educated enough. The more educated that you can be and be around the right people, the less likely you are in order to be engulfed by that risk. So mitigate it wisely. I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. If you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. And most importantly, Elon says, do it because you love it. The reality is growing a great business is gonna be a combination of love and hate. But you've got to realize that anything great in life is going to be a combination of love and hate. Even your closest relationships. You've got to realize that all the stuff that you hate, all the stuff that goes wrong or all the stuff that's frustrating, frustrating is ultimately the things that you end up deleting, removing, or delegating out of your life so that you can position yourself in the areas that you love. So please make sure before you commit to something, before you commit to the business, ask yourself, why am I doing this? What is this going to give me? How is this going to make me feel on a daily basis? How can I contribute? What is it going to give me back that I can share with the world and get really, really locked in to the value that you're creating for yourself and the value that you're creating for others. And that is ultimately going to lock you in. And anything that you're inspired by in life will be a combination of support, will be a combination of challenges, Dr. John D. Martini says, and will 100% grow you in heart, mind, body, soul, and everything else. So get locked into the fact that if you're going to grow up a great business, there's certainly going to be problems. There's certainly going to be massive victories, but you got to combine the two, not get complacent, lean into challenge and sit in the fear of expansion. Hope that's been useful. Let's see what else he's got to say. Well, there's a ton of failures along the way, that's for sure. Um, like I said, for, as, as I said, for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed, and uh, we, we, we were just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. So multiple failures along the way. I, I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, no, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones, well, there was no, no point in hiring them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. Um, so if I could have found somebody better, then we would have maybe had less than three failures. The last thing that Elon talks about is overcoming and learning from failure. There is no such thing as failure, only feedback. You've got to treat it like data. And the reality is when you look at what went well, what went wrong, you are left with core data and feedback that you can ultimately utilize to drive you as an individual further and also your business further. So you acquire wisdom by understanding the negative of the actual situation and then looking for the meaning and purpose in that negative in order to find meaning to create momentum to move forward. And you've got to have those mental models in place in order to dissect things quickly and keep moving on. Because trust me, all your greatest failures bear the greatest gift. Whether it's in your personal life or whether it's in your business life, you will always, always, always find meaning, meaning from a downturn. So don't be afraid to look a little bit deeper. How is this serving me? What did it give me? What did it mean for me? How can I benefit from this future lesson now? Who can I share it with? How can I build it into my new company? How can I build it into my current company? Whatever it may be. There's always, always, always great, valuable wisdom with any failure or chaos in your life or business. So that's Elon Musk completely dissected. I hope you find value in that. We're gonna be reviewing key entrepreneurs over the course of the next few months. 
If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you click below, share this video, leave a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback on these to let us know whether we are hitting the spot and adding value. And also, of course, give us some ideas as well. Thank you so much. Take care and see you soon.